You have a sheet in front of you that has two different poems on it. So today what we are gonna be working on is comparing and contrasting. So I should see you sing all the way up with your eyes up forward. So we have some key points up here. So the first one, I want you to read it with me in a whisper. One, two, three. Comparing means showing similarities. Okay, comparing means showing similarities. So when I ask you to compare the two things together, that means we're looking for ways that they are alike, things that they have in common, ways that they are similar. Number two, read it with me. One, two, three. Contrasting means showing differences. So when we are contrasting things, we're doing the opposite. We are saying how they're different, how they are not alike, how they're unique, how they're special. And number three is when we compare and contrast, it helps us better understand what we're reading. That's the whole reason that we do it. So if you're able to pick something up and you're able to say, well, Miss Martin, they're alike for these two reasons, but they're different for these other two reasons, then that tells me that you understood what you read because you can compare and contrast them. And it helps you dig deeper under what the poem actually is talking about. So flip it over to the notes side. We're gonna be filling this out together today and then you're gonna be working in partners to compare and contrast some poems today. So our very first line, it says, when we are comparing two texts or comparing two poems, we are saying how they are blank. We are saying how they are what? Alike. 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 So you can say how they're common, how they're alike, how they're write similar. That. Go ahead and write that. Yes. Good. Our second key point is when we contrast two poems or two texts, we tell how they are different. different. Very good. Compare and contrast is something that we studied earlier in the year, and it comes up throughout our curriculum. And so what I decided to do was normally in the curriculum, it's just fiction versus nonfiction, and there's some obvious differences there for our kids. And so I wanted to push them. We've gone through a couple of tests, and they do okay on compare and contrast, but I thought that maybe it was a little too low level for them. So we just finished a unit on figurative language and a, a genre study on poetry, and so I thought that would be an interesting way to kind of push them to not only know about poetry, but then to also compare and contrast across multiple elements, multiple texts, and think about it in a higher order to really push them, because they're smart kids. They just uh, raise the bar on them constantly. Okay, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to give you a second. Flip it over. We're going to read these poems together. And then we're going to talk about how they're alike and how they're different. Okay. Wake up, everybody. It says, wake up, everybody. No more sleeping in bed. No more backwards thinking. Time for thinking ahead. The world has changed so very much from what it used to be. There is so much hatred, war, and poverty. Wake up, all the teachers. Time to teach a new way. Maybe then they'll listen to what you have to say. Because they're the ones who's coming up, and the world is in their hands. When you teach the children, teach them the very best that you can. The, world's, the world won't get any better if we just let it be. The world will get no better. we got to change it, you and me. So that was our first one. Janice? Okay, so Janice already noticed that there's a rhyme to this poem. As she was reading, she picked up on that. We're going to go ahead and read the next one. So, I can. This is a song. You might have heard it on the radio before. So it says, boys and girls, listen up. You can be anything in the world if we trust. An architect, doctor, maybe an actress. But nothing comes easy. It takes much practice. Watch the company you keep and the crowd you bring because they came to do drugs, but you came to sing. So if you're going to be the best, I'll tell you how. Put your hands in the air and take a vow. And then at this bottom part, the author, the singer, is saying, I know I can, and then they have a student singing it back to them. So they're repeating it. They're using repetition. So they say, I know I can. I know I can. So I would say, I know I can. I know I can. Be what I want to be. Be what I want to be. If I work hard at it, I'll be where I want to be. Okay, that's how it goes. So we, we connect poetry a lot to lyrics and songs, and even two of the poems that I pulled today were songs, and I think that they find that really interesting. Um, earlier in the year, I would let them tap out the beats or perform their own poetry, or here's two stanzas, write your own stanza on the end, and they have a lot of fun being creative, and I think that 
we don't even give our kids enough opportunities to be really creative and create their own poetry and write their own kind of things. And so when they relate that to songs that they hear every day on the radio or at home or even at school, that really captures their interest and makes them want to do it above just getting a grade or working with a partner. So we have these two poems or these two songs. Now we need to flip it over. We are looking for ways that they are similar first. We have three lines. We're going to list three similarities, three things that they have in common between, oh, wake up everybody and I can. I'm going to do the first one. So the first thing that I notice is that they are both set up as poems and they are songs. So that's what I would write on number one. They're both poems. They're both songs. That's number one. I noticed that they could both be sung. You could hear them on the radio. Excellent. By a show of hands, does anyone else notice, what are some other similarities that you noticed in these two? Alyssa? They both rhyme. Okay, so like Janice was saying earlier, they both rhyme. Excellent job. Okay, Mr. Zach. Um, they both are about everybody. What do you mean they're both about everybody? Like the I Can one is about boys and girls and Wake Up Everybody is about like teachers and stuff. Okay, so they are both written to people. Why? I'm gonna push you. Why are they writing to the? Why are they writing to teachers and kids? Why do you think? What are they trying to say to them, Zach? They're trying to say, like, don't drop out of school. Okay, so that what? So that you can get a better education. Okay, so they're both telling you to to be better, to get your education. So you could put that it has a positive message, or they're talking to teachers and students. That's a similarity. So their audience is teachers and students. Zach was saying they both have a similar message. Tatiana? They both have ry rhythm. They both have rhythm, like a song. That's another excellent one. Let's talk about how they're different. Drugs. I mean, education and one talks about um, sleep, um, wake up, everybody, wake up and sleeping. Okay, so how are they different? Different because um, one had one had one talk one talks about one talks about sleeping and waking up and one talks about um, boys and girls good behaving and getting good education. Okay, so one's talking about just one day and the other one's talking to kids over a long period of time, over their whole life. That could be one difference. Why wouldn't a good difference be they're written by different authors. But, I mean, it's true, that's a difference, but why isn't that the best thing that we could say about it? Tiana? Because one probably um, experienced um, something different in their life while they were living. Okay, that's true, so maybe they had different experiences, and we could talk that that's a more important difference. Tatiana? They both have different things to say. They both have different things to say. So if we're only saying, oh, they're written by different authors, that's not getting at how they're actually different. That's kind of a silly difference. That doesn't help us better understand anything we're reading. So we want to make sure that we're looking for differences of how they, their message is different, how who they're talking to is different, anything like that. Alyssa? Um, because the author isn't, isn't in the poem. Okay, the author isn't included in the poem. He's speaking to someone, right? Okay, are there any other differences before we move on that you noticed? What about how they're set up? What about how they're set up? We've been talking about what they're saying to you. I have the same wonderful people who are participating, and I just need to, it makes sense, because those are people already on A's and B's. I need to see hands up. Jakaya? No, you can do it. One, uh, wake up everybody has five stances and I can has two. Perfect. So wake up everybody has five stanzas and I can is broken up into only two. So that's a big difference. They're organized in a different way. One has a couple of different stanzas and the other one only has two. So that's another difference that you could put. Any other differences before we move on? What, what was the one that Jukai had said? One has five stanzas and the other one only has two. 
You found another one? Okay, one more, Alyssa. No, what did Zach say? Oh, Zach, what were you saying, honey? Um, I forgot what the last one on the alike one was. The last one on the alike, it could be anything that you wanted. Their message was similar. Okay, so now that we have written out how they're alike and how they're different, we are going to fill in our Venn diagram as our visual. So we are going to look and fill in. Our similarities always go in the middle, and then what's unique about I can is going to go on this side of the Venn diagram, and wake up everybody. What's unique about that one is going to go on this side of the diagram. So go ahead and take what you have already listed out and put it in the right spot in your Venn diagram, because a lot of times we use a Venn diagram to also compare and contrast different poems. That's fine, then fill it in. I already see Desiree and Tyreen and Tiana. They're already filling in their Venn diagrams. You can add more or you can only do what we listed. Yes, Janice? Are we doing these with partners? Or are we doing mm -hmm. these? No, just that one's oh. what they're like. Okay. I'm going to give you about one minute to fill in that Venn diagram, and then we're going to move on to a partner activity. It's pretty normal. Every lesson that we're doing a skill or a strategy, we talk about what it is, what it means. So if we're talking about main idea, what is main idea? What are some different ways you might encounter main idea? What do you think about when you're trying to find the main idea? And then why does that even matter to you? Why does it matter to be able to tell me how something is similar or how something is different or what the main idea is? Because if they can't make that why connection of why am I learning this and why does this matter to me, then I find that they're not as invested as they need to be to learn those skills and strategies to move on to the next level. Now that we've compared two poems, Ms. Myron's going to kick it up one little notch. So I'm going to give you a third poem to work on with the people around you. And it is going to be your job, your objective, to look at this poem, to read it, and then you are going to compare this poem to the other two poems that we have already read together today. So we're making it a little harder, and you're going to have to compare things across all three of them. They learn just as much from each other as they learn from me. And hearing someone next to them get it and watching that light bulb go off for them, I think a lot of times pushes them and pushes their own thinking rather than just hearing Miss Martin say it. So we've already learned all of our figurative language terms. You could look at how the language is different, how the language is the same. You could look at the stanzas. You could look at the message. You could think about why the author wrote the poems, who the author is talking to. We want to get beyond just, they're all poems. They're all by different authors. Why doesn't Miss Martin want to see those kind of things? Maurice? But they're not, they not important, they not important, um, important details. Okay, they're not the most important details. Jakaya? Because we're fourth graders, not first. Okay, we're fourth graders. We're not first graders. So first graders could do that, right? We're smarter than that. Desiree? Because we know how to make things sound better than just, like, th it has this. Okay, that's part of it. Um, Janice? Mm -hmm. Okay, you need more information. And remember, let's go back to our key points. Remember, when we compare and contrast, it's helping us understand what we read. If all we say is, well, they're poems and they're all written by different people, that's not helping us to be better readers. Zach, do you, what do you want to add? Um, it's like that one lesson that we took that don't put boring sentences and boring words. Okay, so we're more mature, right? And we can use more mature words and we can think on a higher level. So what I'm going to do with the people around you, your first step is to read the poem anyway. Your second step is to work on the Venn diagram. What is just in any way? And then how is any way different than these other poems that we've already read today? When you are done, I want you to work with your partner to answer these four questions. Why are we practicing answering the questions after? We've already compared and contrasted. So why are we working then on the questions? Why are we working on questions? You gonna be brave? No, Janice. To help us understand questions when we need help. Help you understand questions. Why, no. Tatiana? No. Why does she care about understanding the questions? Um, because they have answer answer choices that help you out. 
Okay, they might have answer choices that help you out. Tiana? Um, because because if you see the questions on FK, they're more difficult than the ones that we're doing now. Okay, so we know that we have to compare and contrast these, but we also know that sometimes we're going to see questions that are comparing and contrasting like these. So we want to practice comparing and contrasting both ways so that we're ready. I'm going to hand this out. Someone please repeat my directions for me. Please repeat my directions for me. Desiree. Read the poem first. Read the poem first. Do the Venn diagram. Do the Venn diagram. Comparing what? Comparing... This poem to what? The, the, the poem we're getting now to the two poems we already read. Perfect. And then what? And then answer the four questions. And then answer the four questions. Um, you guys have been doing an excellent job and you've been sitting so quietly, so I'm going to give you 30 seconds to stand up, stretch, wiggle, wiggle break, whatever. Your 30 seconds just started. Get up and wiggle because you've been sitting still for so long. Get up and wiggle. When the 30 seconds is over, you can start working with your partner. Wiggle it out. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It is fine to talk with your partners, to talk with the people around you. Step one, Desiree already told us we have to read this next poem. So you should be reading that poem. It's called Anyway, all to yourself right now. And then when you're done, work with the people around you and let's figure out what are the similarities and what are the differences across all three of these poems. I do try to use a graphic organizer. This is the first day that we're reviewing compare and contrast. So normally I try to scaffold it and on maybe the first day I try to use a graphic organizer. Usually I pull one from FCRR or something like that and we analyze that text with that graphic organizer. And that helps them visually understand for the people who need that visual picture. And it also helps them map out what they're thinking so that they can be really aware of that. And then we move on to, to harder and more complex tasks and say, we might not always have time to draw a graphic organizer, so what do we do then? If we're comfortable enough comparing and contrasting and thinking about that as we read, then we don't need the graphic organizer anymore. It's just a tool. So it's saying, if you give the world your best, something bad might happen, but you should give the world the best you've got anyway. So they're saying that sometimes bad things are going to happen, right? Life isn't perfect. Sometimes bad things happen. But what they're saying is that you still have to give your best anyway. What do they mean by that? Um, you, have to, you still have to do the right thing. You still have to do the right thing, even though it's hard, right? So I think that's what the author is trying to say, in that even though it's hard sometimes, even though maybe sometimes bad things happen, you still have to give your best anyway. You still have to do the right thing anyway. Does that make more sense? Okay. It's all one big chunk, right? So it's only one stanza? It's only one stanza. So how is that different than this one? Okay, so they're organized in a different way. Excellent. What's the middle? For how they're all alike. Okay, so let's look at all of them. Let me ask you this question. You guys have already talked about repetition and stanzas and things like that. So let me ask you this. Okay, let me ask you this question. Who do you think all of these poems are talking to? Us. Us? Who's us? Students. students. So this one's talking about students and telling students what? To do stuff anyway. To do stuff anyway. To do good even though it's hard. Who's Wake up everybody's talking to who? To teachers. Okay. To teachers and students. And who is this one talking to? About to oh, no. boy, boys oh, and look girls. At it. Boys, boys and girls. Oh, yeah. And boys and girls. And What's yeah. it telling them that they can do? Because it says boys and girls. They can do that. They can do things like sing. Okay, they could sing. They could do whatever they want. So what do all three of these have in common then? They're talking to they're telling to students. try harder anyways. They're talking to students and they have a similar message. They're telling them to try harder anyway. That's good. Do you see how you guys just dug deeper into that? You didn't just say, oh, they're all poems. But you said, 
this one is towards students, this one is towards students, this one is towards students. That's a similarity. That helps you better understand all of them. Okay, so that's one more similarity that you can put there. Good. When you guys are done with that, you can move on to the questions too. Talking to the students is the most one of the most important things that I do. Having reading conferences is something that I try to constantly do. This is what you got on your last test. This is what we missed. Why do you think that is? You did worse on this test than you did on your last one. Why do you think that is? Kids don't know naturally just to be self-aware. That's kind of a skill that we have to teach them. And so having those conversations makes, oh, maybe I wasn't paying attention that day and I didn't do well. When I see that I didn't do well in the paper, that teaches me about that behavior. And so teaching them to ask questions and to push themselves and to be aware of what they need to learn and taking their own control over that is so huge. B, C, and D all make sense. Okay, so you got rid of A. The title of both the poem is a repeated phrase in the poem. So, anyway, 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 anyway. Okay, so that's true. And what about over here? I can, I know, I can. I can. I can. Okay, and what about wake up everybody? Do you see wake up everybody in this poem ever again? Yes. Wake up everybody. Okay, so we just said the title of but all the poems is a repeated phrase in the poem. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you want to keep B. Both poems were written as songs to be enjoyed. Do you absolutely know that this is a song? No. No. There you go. So we can get rid of C. D. The poems both are intended for teachers and the students. That's not intended. See, you answered it all by yourself. I meant that I'm going to challenge them, and that's a word that we encounter a lot in my classroom, is that sometimes Miss Martin is going to make you answer a harder question, and sometimes it's okay to be shy, and sometimes it's okay to raise your hand and be confident and, and know that you know the answer. And a lot of times with teaching, that's half the battle in, in our classroom is showing these kids that, you can do anything that you want to do. You can do anything that any other kid at any other school is doing, and you can probably do it better if you worked really hard. So that's something that we do emotionally for each other, that we either all succeed, all of our goals on the wall, we will. It's not 80% of us or some of us or the boys or the girls. It's all of us, and I tell them that all the time. It's all of us or none of us. Okay, so let's go ahead and share out a few things Raise your hand to answer. What are some similarities between Anyway and the other poems that we found? Desiree, tell me one similarity. They are all trying to persuade you to do something. Ooh, they're all trying to persuade you to do something. Excellent noticing. Tyreen, give me another noticing. Uh, they're, both, uh, they're both trying to get uh, a, a student to do something. They're all trying to get students to do something. Terrell? They all talk to boys and girls and have stances. They're all talking to boys and girls. Tatiana? Um, they're all try they tell you to try harder anyway. If you they're trying them. to persuade you to try hard no matter what. Maurice? They both repeat words. They both repeat words. They use repetition. Excellent job. And Tiana, and then we're going to move to differences. Yeah. So a lot of times when I'm planning out a lesson, I think about what I want to ask the kids to get the higher level thinking and the questions ahead of time. And so putting those into my lesson plan kind of holds me accountable to remember to ask them the question because a lot of time as a teacher, you just get caught up in the moment and being with your kids, making sure that they get it and we forget to ask those questions. And them answering those questions is them op their opportunity to think. Okay, differences. I need differences. Zach, give me a difference. Um, anyway, is persuading to do what you want, and and um, everybody wake up is persuading to wake up. Okay, so they have different. Even though they're both trying to persuade you, they're persuading you to do different things. That's an interesting one, Alyssa. Persuading you to do whatever you did, even if it, if someone hurts you and your feelings. Okay, let's move on to Desiree. Go ahead. One way that they're different. It's it is talking about doing the, anything anywhere. Anything anywhere. Okay, Janice. What was the question? Why are they different? Um, they're different that um. 
I can does not have repetition. Rep repetition. Okay. Whereas anyway does repeat a phrase over and over again. Okay, I'm going to pause us right there. This entire class period, we have been talking about ways that we can find similarities and ways that we can find differences. Why in the world does that matter to you? Because, I mean, you did the work, so you're going to get the grade. But why does it matter to you as a reader to think about comparing and contrasting while you're reading, after you're reading? Why does that even matter to you? Only two people know why that matters to them. Why does that matter to you? Just because Ms. Martin tells you to do something, I mean, Tatiana, what do you think? Um, so you can um, know what each story is about. Okay, you can. you can know what each story is about. How does comparing and contrasting help you know what each story is about, though? Because um, you get, it helps you know that this one is talking about something and like they're talking about something different or they're doing something different. Okay, so it can show you as you're reading. Maybe this one is a little different than the last one. You're showing that you understand it. Tiana, what were you going to say? Um, because it helps us with reading and our, and our, um, and our getting to our 25 books chapter. chapter Ooh, book. okay. So we know that as we've been working to read our 25 books, we know that one of our questions on our book reports is comparing and contrasting books at some points. So that also helps us reach one of our goals, comparing and contrasting. Anything else that anyone else wants to add? Desiree? Um, it helps us with the FCAT. If there's like a hard word, you can pronounce it. How does comparing and contrasting help you, though? It helps us with seeing what differences the stories have, like if this one's trying to persuade you or it's trying to inform you. Oh, perfect. So she says, as you're reading, if you can think, this one's trying to persuade me, but this one's just giving me information, that could help you as well as a better reader. So as we continue to do this, comparing and contrasting is going to help us meet one of our goals. We know that we constantly want to be moving up, but it's also going to help you be a better reader so we can all read like fifth graders before we get to fifth grade because that's our goal. So we are going to go ahead and close out there. I need you to pass your papers to the middle. Make sure your name is on them. Pass your papers to the middle. I think my hope for today was that they understood that if they can think about similarities and differences as they're reading, that it will help them better understand the bigger picture of things. So better understand the message, better understand what the author is trying to accomplish, better understand a theme. And a lot of times in life, someone might say, oh, well, what's the better decision? That's a critical thinking skill that you have to be able to sit there and compare a deal, compare a price, compare colleges. And you're going to have to be able to critically think about that and think about what do they have in common? What do they each have that's unique? How is that different? How is that alike? And so getting them to think in that reference of a mind at a really early age is so important because you lay that groundwork for skills that they're going to need well beyond school.